You're tuned in to First Issue Club Podcast. Stick around for two seconds after this music comes back. Oh, like oh we're back, baby. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. That's what you call an intro. <laughs> well, you're just tuned in to First Issue Club, a podcast where we take you on a magical journey ride. Or th- those are two th- the same things. On magical a magi- journey ride. No, no, no. You're magical right. on a magical journey ride uh, through uh, comic book world. We read first issues and we invite you along. We're a reading club and uh, we make it easier to read comics. Like every week, we read the first of something and we talk about it. So it's like every week you could start a new journey slash ride with us. <laughs> a ride journey. Yeah. You Think of us as the seatbelt that holds you in. On the magical journey ride of comic books. We are your free Uber that you have a 50% chance of dying in. And we take you to frozen custard. <laughs> but we have Tic Tacs in the back. I've never been offered anything in an Uber. You haven't? No. I've been offered sex, Tic Tacs, water. Okay, first of all, I think what everybody wants to know about Tic Tacs, what flavor were they? Ooh, orange, which is why. Okay, I don't care. Sex? You were offered <laughs> sex in an Uber? Yes. Um, Was it the driver? Uh, yeah. But the driver was, what? was in the trunk. He got out, and he went in the trunk, and he said, and he, like, pushed the whole, you know, like, you can push uh, the yeah. the armrest, and he said, you want to have sex? And oh, I- okay. <laughs> so it was like, that's his second business. Like, he had a back room. Yeah. And I was like, no, I, I actually just ordered a ride. And he's like, oh. other, And he switched apps. <laughs> he thought I was on FetLife. <laughs> what had, is like, that? He had, like, a ball gag. Uh, that's like a, it's like a fetish thing. Fet life? Fet life, yes. I want to download that now. <laughs> I'm at this point where I just never know where Budget King is bullshitting or telling a real story or what. <laughs> you you live just an amazing life filled with characters yep. and adventures. That's what it's like to lie to yourself. <laughs> well, well, we've got the normal cast of characters. Unfortunately, Caitlin could not make it this week. We miss you, Caitlin. Uh, but before we get going, I wanted to ask you guys um, if you heard much about the uh, the second coming that was going to come out on Vertigo. That's the title of a comic book, The Second Coming. It was a story about Jesus coming back and being the sidekick of a superhero. What? Uh, that sounds awesome. Sounds pretty fun, right? Yeah. Well, uh, an online petition was created um, that... Is a, I, I guess a website that's specifically catered to petitions surrounding religious things, specifically conservative Christian values. Yeah, and they got a lot of signatures and were like bombing DC with tons of emails on uh, people saying, you know, why we don't think this should be um, published. It disgraces our faith and yada yada. DC uh, called the book off. Get the fuck out of no. here! Yeah, oh, that's horseshit. They called the book off. Why? Also, it's not disgracing your faith. It's actually kind of promoting. I thought you were going to well, say that liberals got mad and shut it down. This is the thing that the guy said where he was like, I, and I think if you hear this a lot from people who are taking on subjects of characters that in the media may not be someone you necessarily like root for. Yeah. But uh, I think even if you're anti something, in order to write a good story about it, you gotta have you kind of have to have compassion for like that side of the story, like in the Book of Mormon. Like obviously, those guys take a a funny look at Mormonism, but at the same time, there's some real emotion and heart behind that story. If you've if totally. you've seen that, so, and and the guy the guy who wrote this said the same thing about about this story that it wasn't just like a complete goof, but. He's he's using Jesus in a sense to take a look at modern Christianity and the um, how the values have been changed from you know what Christ's initial intent might have been. Right, like he respects like uh, Jesus is like a philosopher and religious character, but doesn't necessarily like how it's used uh, in today's world just for like political means. I, I mean, has the Bible been on the New York's bestseller list? I, I don't know. I think, well, yeah, you're right. I don't know. I was going to surmise that it's the num- most sold book every year. Every year? You think every year it just smashes everything? Yeah. I would, I, yeah I would Who's have, rebuying the Bible? 
<laughs> when you get, I my mean, when my wife and I got married, we were gifted at least five Bibles. Oh Same. my god! Yeah, that's gonna be on Caitlin and I's invitations. Save your Bibles. No Bibles. Give us the money. Yeah, I got this giant anagram Bible that weighs like fifty pounds in my basement. That uh, is that worth money? Uh, it's anagrammed with our names on it. Like, Monogrammed. Oh fuck. Oh, okay. what's anagram? I know what an anagram is. It's mon- I know what it's, is it? It's monogram. Is an anagram like a like I say the letters for something <laughs> like to to remember or that that that's a mnemonic device. That's a mnemonic device. Okay. What is an anagram? And I'm more concerned when, about an, that now than like what's an, a Bible. Like NASA is an anagram. That's an anagram. Okay, yeah. Got it. That's, that's not an acronym. That's an acronym. Then what's an anagram? So none of us, let's confirm this. None of us know what an anagram I is. I don't know what an anagram is. I know is. what a bananagram is. So <laughs> what like, is it? It's the game. So I know if, what a telegram is. If NASA isn't an anagram, then Budget King was right on what an anagram is. Which is? Like my dear Aunt Sally sort of shit, right? But we said that that's a mnemonic device. Fucking someone get their goddamn <laughs> space <laughs> phone and look up anagram. I don't think that's a mnemonic device. Okay, okay. A word, <laughs> phrase, or name formed by rearranging the letters of another, such as cinema formed from Iceman. That's an anagram? <laughs> That's funny that the first example that came up was related to comic books. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a jumble. <laughs> That's what I call them. We, need to l- reti- l- we need to retire the word anagram and just replace it with jumble. Thank you. Yeah. So here's one thing that the creator of this book had said that uh, DC have been professionals throughout. Yeah. Um, they were getting blasted, decided to release the book, but they did offer him the rights to maintain uh, ownership of the book oh, okay. completely. So the book got essentially released to him for no cost, and he can take it to an independent publisher now and just publish that book. So he says they've been awesome. He's going to go to an indie pub and release the same book that he would have before. It's already got like so much press. If I'm Image, right. I'm all the fuck over that. Oh, totally. Yeah. If I'm DC, I'm fucking shooting myself in the head for letting this Here's go. Here's what I'm really puzzled by. Here's what I'm really anagrammed by. Yeah, me too. Jumbled. DC stands for Disown Christ. Do they not know that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I really got you. Here's, that was that was good. Here's a point. Ooh. Here's a point that the people who made the petition make, okay. Yes. Uh, that I I want your guys' input on. Gladly. Would DC Comics publish similar content about other religious leaders, such as Muhammad or Buddha? And sure. I think for. Uh, probably not actually. I don't think they would. And yeah. and I think to to us it's like we we look at other. Uh, cultures and nationalities and and maybe as people who aren't uh, heavy believers <laughs> we we maybe respect outsiders beliefs more than we respect the faiths that like we once were tied to being raised Catholic right so I kind of get that perspective yeah I do in a sense, but that we that we hold other cultures, religions dear and pay respect to people believing what they believe, but kind of um oh, we just got a notification that old guard, yeah, from image is gonna be turned into a Netflix movie with Charlize Theron. oh, no kidding, really Ooh. yeah is she can play the lead? I don't know if she's gonna play the lead or not, but she's definitely in it. She's awesome. I love her. Me she's too. very versatile, yeah. do you guys ever watch young adult? uh yes. Yeah, with love her and Pat Oswalt. Oh my god, that movie is amazing. It's incredible. Yeah, Mike, if you have not seen it, do yourself a favor. I she's in uh, I Monster too, doesn't she? She is Monster. She's the monster from Monsters Ball. Nope, monster. I got that wrong. I think it's just called Monster. Yeah, yeah. Two Wait, different movies. Is she Atomic Blonde too? No. Yep. Oh, she is. Mm-hmm. Man, look at that naming shit. <laughs> naming things a person <laughs> has been in. <laughs> Uh, speaking of comic books being shows, uh, what's the reception of Umbrella Academy been? I can speak from this firsthand. Caitlin and I watched the entire series in a day. In one day? In one day. How many episodes? I want to say like 12 or 13. Oh, wow. Are they half an hour? No. 
Oh fuck! One day. Well, that was like our anniversary gift because in, here in here in Missouri it was super snowy, so we were snowed in. Yeah, this is true. Mm-hmm. So there's like nowhere to go. Yeah. Everyone was like locked inside. So we had previously like bought food to like kind of stay in and nest a little bit. Yep. And then it snowed, and we're like, well, this worked out wonderfully. So we fucking binged the shit out of that, and it is fucking awesome. I saw three people on my Facebook talk about the love for it. They're just like how amazing it was. I think they binged it all. Um, almost, I think two of the three had no idea it was a comic book. Oh, really? No kidding. That's yeah. awesome. And then the other person who had like a loose idea was like, I'm ordering the books right now. And I wanted to be like, oh, which, uh, which arc <laughs> are you doing? <laughs> uh, be sure to get the uh, uh, free comic book day one because that's the true origin. Right. <laughs> and, uh, then, and then I also wanted to be like, do you know My Chemical Romance wrote this? <laughs> Not the whole band, just the one guy. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> I just want to see the whole band in the studio just like, okay, what mm. does Pogo do next? <laughs> but it's uh, good. It's it, it's really in- enjoyable. Every episode fucking slaps. Like, really? Okay. It hits on every level. Like, it, with the Marvel movies, they, they ran into that whole thing where, like, mid-season, it was kind of a trudge to get through some episodes. You're talking about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm talking Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm talking Daredevil. I'm talking Jessica oh, Jones. sure. Luke Cage. It, any of those episodes... There was that one or two episodes, if you're Iron Fist, the entire first season, where it just didn't click on every cylinder. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I feel like I've taken heat from other fans who, like, love those seasons of the show so much, but even my favorite seasons of those Netflix Marvel shows, right? like, they're just... They dip. They're, like, four episodes too long. Yeah, they need to like cut out some of the middle of those where they just exactly. they just meander for a while towards the end. Yeah, I did not experience that with this show. Oh, <laughs> you know what I heard the trigger might be? Oh, what? What? Let's get this podcast started. 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 We got Sharky, the Bounty Hunter, out on Image Comics by Mark Millar and Simone Bianchi. Uh, so this is one of those Netflix shows. Um, yep. It's, it's going to be a Netflix show. I think it's a short run. I think it's like a one of four. And we essentially have Han Solo, who looks like he jumped out of a porno, and he's uh, purple and... That's it, actually. It's really just Han Solo. Can I ask a question before we get too far into this book itself? Yes. More on the Millar universe and the Netflix deal? Yeah. I haven't seen or heard anything about any of these books being an actual production. Like, this is the, what, fourth one? Yeah. Yeah. Where the fuck are the other shows? Like, the like Huck came out, what, like two years ago? Mm-hmm. And they knew they were going to make it a Netflix show. Is Netflix making good on this? Well, I don't know if when Huck originally came so, out, they knew they were going to make it into a Netflix show. Oh, really? Huck is not part of that deal. This is yeah, it is. Well, so yes, Huck is being made, but it's not part of the deal. Now he's taking it back. It's not part of the deal where it's like you we're going to put it in production, then you're going to release the comic. They signed a handful of those. Magic, yeah. Magic Order is one of those. Sharky, and there's going to be more. And I think there's Prodigy. A, Prodigy. Yeah, but you're right. How the fuck are they going to make all of these? Well, I feel like some of them are going to be easier to make than others. Prodigy will probably be an easier one. Huck will probably be an easier one. Yeah. I don't know how the fuck they're going to make this book, because I don't know what the fuck yeah, is going on. Yeah, it's all on. aliens in outer space. Yeah. So, But here's here's my thing. 
Does that? I can't wait for this fucking thing. Yeah. Well, it's sit, not. Sit back, everyone, because no, this is going to be a take. Here we go. <laughs> it's not that good. I, I, I just think if I'm if I'm Netflix, I can't actually believe that selling a comic book before the show is going to do jack shit for my show. Like, it might build, build hype, but it's not, like, I don't know. Maybe it's small potatoes for them to, like, just do a marketing campaign like that. It probably doesn't cost them much of anything at all. And, in the grand scheme of things. And it's probably just like, I think Netflix famously invests in just crazy things to s- just see how they work. Yeah. And this is one of those things. I think the thing that sucks about it as a comic book collector is it like makes these comics valuable less. Because they print so many of them and there's hype surrounding Well, and there's, them. Yeah, right. there's no excitement. Like You don't get to find out this is going to yep. be a show. It's fucking slapped with Netflix. There's even a goddamn Punisher ad in this comic book, Wrong Publisher, Netflix. Also, that show's not around anymore. <laughs> yeah, it did get canceled. Oh, yeah. Weird that they're... Pro- I mean, I guess you could stream the first season. Yeah, it's still on there. Yeah. Yeah, that that is funny that there's a Marvel ad. There was, there was a person, a middle management marketing person like me, that was working at Netflix and was like, ah, oh, what print ad do we have for this? Oh, we got Punisher. Throw it on that dumb, weird thing that we're doing. Here's my thing, though. I have a lot of people at my office who are just like, oh, have you been watching the, like blah, 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 comic book show on this thing. And I know for a fact that none of those people read those comics or knew that those were comics before having watched the show. And I think there's a built-in audience for fantasy stuff, and people are maybe just more likely to watch something that they heard got adapted from a comic book. Case in point, uh, my wife is going with four of her women friends to see... The premiere of uh, Captain Marvel. No kidding. Yeah, that's dope. Um, because it was like a random thing that got like happened or whatever. Uh huh. And they're all excited. I think none of them, not to discredit them, like have because this is me included, have a really good idea of anything about this besides that it's like a female superhero. Yep. But that's important. I think they got that at least. Yeah. yeah. But they don't. Do you think they need to know that it's like? Who Jude Law is in it, and like why? The character and plays? this is technically Miss Marvel that becomes Captain Marvel. Like, does any of that matter? No, none. Of, they don't need to know any of the origin story. They just know superhero Marvel. Okay. Well, let's be fair. This will be an origin story. Yeah. I mean, so the. By the way, I'm not. I'm not criticizing it. that in the slightest. Right. Like, I think that's a perfect way to jump into things. It just kind of blows my mind. Like, I wouldn't go see a comic book movie unless I like at least knew a little bit about where the backstory was uh I feel like you got the audience that just wants to go to an action movie cool and then people who are into it too it's just like fun popcorn movie yeah it's gonna be great I think that movie's gonna be amazing I'm really stoked for it did you hear like a bunch of incels are uh are like dogging it on Rotten Rotten Tomatoes Tomatoes, (laughs) trying to bring down the score this yeah fucking let them Perfect. When this thing makes a billion dollars, <laughs> we'll shut the fuck up. The uh, the the online embargo for reviewers uh, was taken down two days ago, and like so, like uh, reviews have been trickling in, and people are losing their minds over it. Really? Oh, like think it's good? Yeah, I I love that. Like act- legitimate that reviewers that this is their <laughs> livelihood. Like us. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're hired by mm-hmm. uh, publications to basically review, do this podcast. Re- review things, yeah. yeah. We're, we're otherwise unsullied by sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. That's the Sorry, one thing. Sorry, Coca-Cola. <laughs> That's my life goal is to be sullied. I want to be unsullied, <laughs> to be Does, fair. You've you really get sullied me. Fucked by that pilot <laughs> that landed a plane on the Hudson. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got sullied. Well, you can't because he's dead. I, I'm I the captain sullied. now. He's dead? Yeah, he died of a heart attattack. You're shitting me, Tom, really? Tom Hanks is dead? No. Sully, the, the actual pilot. Okay, is the guy that goes, I'm the captain now, is that guy dead? The actor? Yeah. No, he's alive. The person that's on the plane and like. Oh my God, I can't hear It's not a plane. What's you're, thinking, you're doing two different movies on purpose <laughs> to aggravate no, me. No, my brain is like. Fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> My brain's all whacked out, man. <laughs> Go back to junior high. Um, all right, Sharky, the bounty hunter. You, you guys like my joke that this is just porno guy? I mean, look at him. Oh, Sh- it's like Burt Reynolds. But yeah, yeah, right. He's got this like Burt Reynolds. 
But Burt Reynolds didn't, sha- didn't shave his head. Like, I think the shaved head thing just screams porno to me. He jumped out of a porno. And he's having sex with, like, a robot or a like monster, a, monster yeah, truck lady. female transformer. Yeah, in the future, people want to turn into robots. Mm-hmm. I like that comic books are being progressive and giving nods to uh, transgender audience and gender non-conforming people, et cetera, et cetera. I feel like in the future, it's taken to an extent in sci-fi anyway, where people are like, I want to get turned into a car or I want to get turned into a porpoise. (laughs) <laughs> and they have the technology to do that, but it seems like it belittles the conversation surrounding like gender. You know what I mean? I completely like, agree. Obviously, isn't it going to lead to a place where people are going to be like, "I want to be a fucking motorcycle someday." That's yeah. how I identify. You know, that's a really good point. I, I hate I, it. I actually was thinking like, "Oh, isn't that progressive?" Because they're using it as a metaphor in the future. Or that's probably the intention here, yeah, but it you're right. grosses me out because it's pretty I, trite. I think you see this pretty common in sci-fi books. Totally. And I mean the main thing that happens in sci-fi books is like the uh div- divulsion of morals and that like yeah. sex with anything and orgies are kind of just rampant, things like that. And then and then even you're right to like make that synonymous with like, oh, I wanna be a robot now as a metaphor for tr- for uh, trans stuff yep. is is very patronizing. Yeah. yeah. It almost seems like uh, tone deaf. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, it sounds like something like a uh, drunk uncle would say during a holiday. Just like, oh, what's next? People <clears throat> people want to become like cars or something. <laughs> it's just like, God damn it, Which Have you guys ever watched the documentary on the mechlophilia? No. No. The people that fuck cars? Oh, it is riveting. Wait, so what do they fuck um, besides the car? My get, I kind of thought they put their dick in the uh, gas ex- pipe. E- exhaust pipe. Oh, exhaust but they, pipe. Or, um, but a lot of people, were, they would go into things like, uh, this guy had this a hard-on for this helicopter, <laughs> and he like snuck into the showroom and he rubs his dick on it, Yeah, and, they, and he gets kicked out. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of, I think it's just a lot of dick rubbing on the car. Oh, okay. But there is, they have found... For this documentary, at least five or six people that want to fuck cars. No shit. And it's Ophelia. I if, love it. Yeah. What's the name of this uh, movie? I think just for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I I knew that that was a fetish, like being yep. attracted to uh, objects. Mm-hmm. Like I know that there's a documentary where people are like sexually attracted to like certain buildings oh, and like cool. Ferris wheels yeah. and stuff like that. I felt that. You felt that? <laughs> I mean, I feel that. Okay. <laughs> Um. So yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm. I, I'll. I'm gonna go ahead and say that. Like, I want to be clear that this wasn't like a huge point of this comic to say that like everyone in the future has like a boner for turning into a machine, but it's just something that generally in sci-fi yeah. I've noticed happens a bunch. It's pretty negligible here. Yeah, I think this comic is supposed to be goofy. In some ways, or like not goofy, but supposed to be a little bit lighthearted. Your comparison to Han Solo with the top of this, I think, is very apt. It's not something I initially thought of, but it's definitely a character with some swagger who doesn't take himself or anyone else too seriously. But at the same time, we we, we get plenty of nods to him having a heart, which is very Han oh, Solo esque. Yeah. That and, like he and, tries to have a hard exterior, but and it's he's a sweet down guy. on his luck, so he needs to like walk that line of getting money. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and he's a bounty hunter, which I guess is not what Han Solo is, but Han Solo is just a transporter. He's a smuggler. He's a smuggler. He's a, right. Yeah. yeah. You, we can lump them into bounty it's hunters. It's both crime, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it felt very similar to that. I mean, he's, he's riding in an ice cream truck. Maybe it's an, uh, it's an, like, homage. Oh, I'm sure there's, uh, playful stealing from... Mm-hmm. Star Wars in this. Oh, like his rectal ship is supposed to be like a... The Millennium Falcon. Millennium Falcon, yeah. Here's the thing about this book, too. I would watch the shit out of this show. Mm-hmm. Like, just aesthetically kind of fun and stuff. I think it's, like, super aesthetically done really well. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I need to read it in a comic book because it doesn't really do a ton of things that are original for a comic book. Yeah, I get that. 
God, you know what I'm just thinking of? Hmm. There's a green bounty hunter that he shoots in a can- Greedo? in like a cantina, which is just like Greedo. Holy but, shit. But this bounty hunter shooting first looks like Han, Han <laughs> shot <laughs> first. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so similar to Han Solo. Yeah. Okay, one thing that I thought was unique. Except for this guy fucks. Yeah, this guy fucks hard. Han Solo fucks. Han Solo fucks for sure. It was implied that that guy yeah. uh, gets it on. So one unique thing I think about this yes. was, oh my God, as I'm saying this, I'm having a moment where I'm like other Harrison Ford character. There is Indiana Jones? a little boy sidekick in this. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that is very much Indiana Jones. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think about like a little kid as a sidekick? Um, I Did, feel like it's like a a way for like the antihero, which is Sharky in this, to kind of endear himself to us. Yeah, and like he probably sees this little kid getting his childhood stolen away, just like he probably got his childhood stolen away. Do they allude to that? Do we get like an idea of his backstory? No, we that don't. Much? No. We, we know we make was, it up. We know that he was in a war. Yeah, and then found much himself like Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> He's a tattoo that brands him as good. Well, the kid actually infers that. Oh, okay. Because like, his, I guess the kid had his Jesus Christ. The kid's dad had the tattoo of the same Marine Corps that um, Got it. Sharky was in. Oh, I gotcha. This could be a thing too, where. You watch the show, and such and such character turns out being this guy in the comic book, and that kind of fills in some blanks for you. Like, these are probably being written uh, very quickly and concisely. But that's not how I read comics. No, you're 100% right. That's not how comics should be written in order, with the anticipation that you're going to watch a show to pay it off. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Yeah, I would watch, I, I stand by, I would watch the hell out of this show. I... Lukewarm on on the comic book itself. Does Netflix even have the money anymore to make a show like this? This seems like it'd be very CGI heavy. When's the Netflix bubble gonna friggin' burst, yeah. you guys? Ooh, I think we are on the cusp. S- stock tip. I'll uh, tell you what, though. I've had that Netflix subscription for fucking ever. That's subby. The, I think they you could still raise... still getting DVDs to your house? No way. I've never done the DVD <laughs> subscription. Either. They can. They could raise the price on that considerably. Maybe. I wouldn't bat a lash yeah. at it. I use Netflix so much. Bong. What Can are you guys paying for Netflix? I pay ten ninety nine. Uh, well, that something like that. The little I get like a new porno every month on Shh. DVD from it. So it's like forty. They don't do porno, do nah. they? I I bet they would. I think they have a deep catalog. Um, they don't though. And I think I pay like seventeen bucks, fourteen bucks. Do you get like the HD one? No. No. Why, why is mine more than yours? I pay more so it can be huh. watched on multiple. That might be what I pay devices for. at once. I pay more just because I love the product. Same. <laughs> oh, well, good for you. <laughs> they actually told me to pay $5, and I was like, you get 14 <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Can everyone give a uh, streaming, a Netflix show recommendation before we go? Mm, yeah. Sure. Um, does it have to be a Netflix show or just a streaming show? Streaming show. I've been really digging this show called Pen15. That's oh, on Hulu. So good. Yeah. I haven't like, watched it yet. It is really good. Yep. It's uh, about a couple teenagers who are played by, middle, played by 30 year olds. And the supporting cast is like eighth graders. Yeah. Like, act, <laughs> they're like actually cast as like little kids. So it's so funny to see them just plopped in the middle. But as I guess a nice nod to the show, you don't, sometimes you get lost in the fact that they're actually 30 year olds because the story is so riveting. And it is the right amount of like, emo middle school like it sometimes yeah. will remind me of the, that movie eighth grade mm-hmm. um and then it's just like just so funny it reminds me of the first time i'm watching Fre- freaks and geeks it, it also reminds me of curb your enthusiasm in that some of the situations they end up in are so uncomfortable that it's almost hard to watch <laughs> yes. you're just like yeah. i'm reliving the situation like i just don't want to be that kid right now um you guys know who's writing that right no uh, uh, Lonely Island. Oh, so Andy Samberg and Yorma and um, they wrote Pen Fifteen. Yeah, you want to know? I had uh, no they're idea. Like the ex- they're like they helped write it, and like they're like the executive producers. One no of kidding. my um, ex students edited three episodes of it. 
No joke. Wow, cool. that's cool. She's at a production house in LA, and she's an editor now. Small world. Mm-hmm. How about that? Did you fail that particular student? <laughs> she was like far and away the best student. She didn't. She learned nothing in my class. She already knew everything she needed to know. <laughs> she's a fabulous person. If I, if I could recommend a show, I was texting you guys the other day. I watched all of Russian Doll over Ooh. the course of a couple days. Yeah. Holy shit, I loved that show. I really need to watch that. To relate it back to comic books, did you watch it? PK? No, no, I had it just your recommendation really made me want to watch it. It there was aspects of it that kind of reminded me of the comic book Sex Criminals. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys. Uh if you're into dark comedies, watch that show. It's on Netflix? It's on Netflix. So good. It's only like eight episodes, I think. So it's a quick it's not a huge investment for you. Hmm. And then uh, we finished that and we went back to Arrested Development. Oh, which I want to rewatch because they're doing a new yep. a new season. New season at the end of the at the end of March, I think. Man, that show has been dead and resurrected so many times. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. You know, you know a question that you posed uh, two weeks ago that has been just knocking around in my head. Huh? You said nobody likes to talk about comics more than me. Who, who is that a question? No, it's not actually. Maybe you lift it at the end. Nobody likes to talk about comic books more than me. No, it was. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. What did it you was say? After the episode was yeah. over, and you were in our little hut room, sending it off to Matt, and we were just spitballing. And he goes, I love comics. He's like, and then he goes, I think I like to talk about comics the most out of this podcast. That is what you said. I said that? Yeah. Was and I drunk? We were drunk. Yeah, we were drunk. you may have been. <laughs> we were drunk. Um, but I was just like, I was thinking about that a lot, and I was like, yeah. I mean, I mean, we all like to talk about comic books, but but maybe Mike does like to talk about them the most. <laughs> we Yeah. We are in a room of people that do not shut the fuck up about <laughs> comic books, which is why we had to start this goddamn show. Right. Everything has to be a contest to me, so I just like to throw statements like that out there. <laughs> so now we know that Mike D has us ranked mm-hmm. in one way or the other. And he is yeah. comic book talker number one. Yep. Numero uno. But also I've been reflecting on that I'm the weird one, which I'm okay with. I yeah. feel like that's your brand. Yeah. But it's you being slowly diverged so to well. Budget King over our text change chains that he's the Which he's the fucking And I, I will be I'll be honest with you, is like I don't see myself that way, which I think makes myself weirder. <laughs> is that it's, this is just honestly me. I'm just being me. <laughs> this is who I am, Dad. Yep. <laughs> you can't not know. <laughs>
All right, now we have High Level from uh, Sheridan and Baginda. Um, I thought, and I was talking to Mike D about this, this is what Sharky the Bounty Hunter wanted to be. Absolutely. But by the way, this is on Vertigo. Did you say that? No, I didn't. But no. this is on Vertigo. No, first issue of this comic. Um, thanks for saying the number of it. It I'm that I'm the meme that's like the college guy sitting at the table and it says, uh, Sharky the bounty hunter is high level, prove me wrong. Uh I I can't because they are the same goddamn book. They are the same fucking Essen- book. Essentially, point- she's not a bounty hunter per se. She might be a smuggler, but she might be a <laughs> smuggler, and she takes a fucking kid across space. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. That's a storyline in this? That's, like, how do they not do, this is like Independence Day and uh, whatever the fuck movie came out that was like it, Armageddon, or like. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I see the comparisons. Aren't there, that hap- this happens a lot in cinema, where there's like the two similar movies that get released at the same time. Yeah, The right. Prestige was one of them. There we go, and The Magician. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. There we go, that's the better one. Uh, and so, yeah, I, 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 this has to be on purpose, right? No. I don't think it's on purpose. There's they no knew, way. they knew a big giant ass, uh, bounty hunter book was going to go. Then the biggest no, fake, no, no. fake independent publisher publishes the same book, but okay. it's a female. First of all, high level was so far superior that they've been working on this book for a minute. Like you, this was not rushed because some big wig in Vertigo slash DC was just like, did you hear the news from Image? They're making a book about a bounty hunter. Turn her into a female. Yeah. <laughs> Shave <laughs> half of her head. <laughs> like this was, I think this is just a weird coincidence, to be, to be honest. <sighs> and maybe they're just both relying on tropes that have been so established that it just, the stars aligned and they both came out at the same time and it's just like, oh, fuck, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Honestly, whatever this storyline is, like, you could give it to me 30 times. I'd give it a B-plus every week. Like, I'm not going to be mad on it, but I'm not going to be in love with it. That's true. Mike Mike handed me this book, and he goes, read it real quick. I read it in about five minutes. Because Greg's a quick reader, by the way. Yeah, very quick. Just so you guys know. And it, it, it is long. There's a lot of story here, a lot of mm-hmm. backstory. Uh, I fucking just... High praises for this book. I I can't believe it was so good, and the artwork in it is bananas. The artwork's a- amazing. I can't stress that enough. That the worlds that are built here, the way that the story is told, just the aesthetic of it all, like it just clicked on every cylinder. I'll me. tell you this. I agree. I liked it a lot. Do not read it right after you read Sharky the Bounty Hunter because it is gonna ruin it for you. And an- another thing I'll add is don't read it after you've just read very long comic books because I was just ready for, I was like, cut out the middle for me. And that's just an issue I have with long comics. Right. That sometimes they just seem like they meander in the middle. And I'm like, get to the point. So I'm th- reading a comic book. That meandering, though, is what I liked about this. Because is it? Because that was the actual character, velo- character development that was missing in Sharky the Bounty Hunter. Yep. I felt like I got to know her, um, and like I kind of understood her plight a little bit. That's true. And I liked that. Um, I thought they did a good job with kind of like her uh, sexual fluidity um, happening. Yeah, there's a little quote on the cover from A, lowercase I, P, T. What the fuck does that stand for? <laughs> apt is that an anagram <laughs> maybe it's an anagram it's a telegram <laughs> it's a banana it's a banana gram. for PETA um, <laughs> vividly rendered punk cool and captivating do you agree with that which I are I am always hesitant when mm. I see reviews like that let's say something's punk yeah yeah, yeah. just cause she has a shaved heart part of her head yeah and you wanna know punk listen to this fucking podcast bitch well <laughs> pu- punk is subjective <laughs> Honestly, but yeah, <laughs> let's get into that conversation. <laughs> Speak on that. Punk is subjective. I think, I think when people say punk or <laughs> punk rock, they <laughs> imagine like fucking sex pistols, sex like, pistols and leather and like yeah. buttons all over you or whatever. But I feel like punk is more of an attitude and or like a philosophy of just like doing things yourself, doing things that uh, are, it's a work ethic. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not like, something that be purchased at a store. Unfortunately, it can, <laughs> but yeah, I think the main philosophy of it was just like 
be who you are, be creative, be whoever you want to be. Fuck yuppies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just or go at it your this, own way. Well, F- this, fuck this, the pursuit of money for money's sake. And yeah. This this comic book definitely has a theme of fuck yuppies, I think. Like, high level is this uh, astute part of the world mm-hmm. that is higher society, and she's just like, I'm not interested in being any part of that. Yeah. So, yeah. She's like, I prefer the slums where, like, I'm with, like, real people. Okay. Who don't care about yeah. ac- accelerating themselves into this upper echelon of yeah society. Which may or may not be... Uh, like the chosen place because there's different rumors going around and we see a couple of her friends giving yeah. the different well, interpretations. Or... And the fucking kid that she gets. Oh, the kid is from it, high level. He's an ascended high level. Or... Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have anything else to say about high level? You didn't convince me that it's not Sharky, but you did convince me to like it. So, half job. So high level is like... Okay, high level is... um, To kill a mockingbird. We'll say for this analogy, get the fuck out of here. For this analogy, we're gonna say oh, okay, high okay, level okay. is okay, okay. To Kill a Mockingbird, so like a cl- classic piece of literature. Sharky is the Cliff Notes to To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay, yes. Uh, there was more number ones that came out this week. Check them out on our YouTube if you don't know that we have that. Um, we're gonna talk about more stuff there. Uh, we've been doing that a little bit. So um, mosey on over there, give us a sub. And last week we did uh, My Boyfriend is a Bear on the podcast, and we didn't talk about the first issues that came out this past week. But but your, Mike D did. Your boy Mike D ran through I, about five first issues I bought. I got to say, I loved that. Oh, thank you. It was yeah, very it sweet was of you. Really, really great. I really, I really enjoyed it. it I fun. love talking about comic books probably more than you guys. <laughs> I so think, it I was think... easy for me to just riff on it to myself in a room in front of an iPhone. No, you did, you did really good. <laughs> yeah, you did a great job. You convinced me that you love comic books more than me. Thank you. If it was you. ranked, it would be Mike D, everyone else, Budget King Greg. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone else in the world? Everyone else in the world. We're really unqualified. Yeah. We just have access to the studio. <laughs> yeah. Remember when we started this podcast and we talked about our qualifications? That's kind of out the window. Did we? I honestly haven't listened to the older episodes. We're maybe I'll do that tomorrow. We'll listen to the first five more episodes. Evolved. Oh god, I don't think I could listen. No, to the I, first my, time I again. haven't matured yet, so my voice is a lot higher. That's true. So that's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> it's a, don't worry, that will be cut immediately. So, <laughs> case in point, I'm the weird one. <laughs> um, yeah, this first issue club podcast. Um, we recorded in KCUR 89.3 Studios. We are part of the Fountain City Frequency family of podcasts. Our music is from Primary Color Music. And uh, we are edited by Matt Hodap, who is a good person. I think that's all from us uh, this episode. That sounds right. Yeah. Um, I had a good time talking great. comic books with y'all. I had a great time. Uh, hopefully you guys had a good time listening. Uh, if you have any conflicting comments or questions about the comic books that we covered or different opinions let us know we are on all the social medias twitter facebook we got some youtube videos coming out which are gonna be really fun heck yeah uh that's it for me guys you got anything else to say nope just that uh we're gonna cover some other books some first issues that didn't come out this week on our youtube channel um so go there for extra content because it's all about you the audience people and truer words have never been spoken. Ever. <laughs> Bye, everyone. See ya. First Issue Club is a proud member of the Fountain City Frequency family of podcasts. We recorded out of Kansas City KCUR Studios 89.3. We are edited and produced by Matt Hodap. Our music is courtesy of Primary Color Music. Music.